I believe Joshua fights for a world title at Wembley Stadium in September. Well, that's a good thing. Are you utterly convinced that that's not just a bad night's work? That'd be first. So, yeah, pun? No, I said that's good. That's, that's very good. <laughs> now, don't strong. go around flinging the ducking accusation because you know where it's got people before. All right? <laughs> all right. I better be careful here. So what's the difference between the light going out with Anthony Joshua and you saying Deontay Wilder is I'm, done? I'm, I'm... Welcome to episode 66 of Talk Boxing with Simon Jordan and Spencer Oliver. We're going to start with those two bosom buddies <laughs> and our old mates, Frank Warren and uh, Eddie Hearn, getting mm. on board very nicely. Queensby 5 versus yes. Matchroom 5. Interesting, on the undercard of Better Beer Bivol, which in itself is a spectacle, Yeah. but this is an interesting development. We know what the weight classes are, why don't you walk us through it? Right. <sighs> Then I need Ooh, to get the little book here. prepared at Yeah, absolutely. Who wrote that absolutely. down Absolutely. Someone's got to do the work, Simon, haven't they? Because you clearly haven't done any. Who wrote that down so, <laughs> Our producer, Pat, saw this That's out. That's a nice, smart Drew pen you got. It. Is that a Mont Blanc Drew, pen you got Drew, there? No, I nicked it from upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> right, so we're going to go Queensbury versus match. We've got yeah. Dion. So, Turkey Al Sheikh is picking a fight. No, hold on. His Excellency. Oh, sorry. If you mind. So, I, I do apologise. Right, I do apologise. His Excellency is picking a fight. Oh, in, the, in the heavyweight division. In the heavyweight division. So what are the divisions we've got? We've got heavyweights. Right, so we've got heavyweights. Middleweights. Middle Middleweights, light heavyweights. And featherweights. And featherweight. Okay, cool. There you go. Right. So, right. What, so what, what we'd like it to be confronted So this with. is this is where I'm at. This is where I see. So yeah. Turkey al I believe, will pick Deontay Wilder versus Zane Zhang. Now, I know you're going to ask me about the rematch clause with Joseph Parker, etc. Yeah. I'm not sure where that is or, or where Step that's going to fall. Money. Yeah, absolutely. So that, that's where I see it. I think that's the fight that is rumoured to be happening. Joe so, Parker, do you, how do you think Joe Parker will feel about that? There might be another option for Joe Parker. You know, I mean, you, you, he's coming off the back of a couple of good wins. We know the undisputed fight is going to happen. We know those titles are then going to vacate. And there may be an option coming up for Joseph Parker. He's going to be well ranked in all the governing bodies now. And I, I believe that Joseph Parker may box for one of the vacant titles. That's where I see it happening. Just a moment before we go on. Are we going to be having people up under trade descriptions? Because how can this be Queensby 5 versus Matchroom 5 when Arzang and Wilder signed? Well, no, because that is Turkey Al Sheikh's fight. So it's not Queensby 5 versus Matchroom 5? No, it's, Queen, it? it's, Queens, it's Queensby 4, 4 versus Matchroom 4, yeah, with one other fight. But it's. it's... Just want to be clear. Okay, in okay. The, in the pursuit of accuracy. <laughs> So you think you think that you think, yeah, so you think, think that the, the wild card that Turkey El Sheikh will put in is he's Zang Deontay versus Wilder. Wilder versus Zhang, yeah, and it sort of makes okay. sense because of the name of Deontay Wilder and a terrible performance he put in last time. Jelly Zhang was unlucky against Joseph Parker; it was nip and tuck. Parker probably just nicked it. You know, it's one of those ones. It was, pa Parker just nicked what? No, I'm, say, I'm saying it was against Jelly Zhang. Parker just nicked it. No, I'm saying he, I said he he should have maybe just nicked it. Right. Yeah, but it was, you know, it was one of those things. So, you give Jelly Zhang another opportunity. Okay. Yeah? Right. Fine, oh, I mean, it you, is what it is. Are you, are you it's not my in pick. That fight? It's the I mean, Emperor, yeah. Emperor Nero's pick. Yeah. Well, it's not his pick either. This is what I'm, this is what I'm suggesting. Oh, you're happen. suggesting? This is what I'm hearing, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, absolutely, right. yeah. Your Can we continue? Yeah. Can we continue? Not far for it to go. One that I'm quite confident about here. Oh, really? Yes, Daniel Dubois versus Philip Hergovic. But I also believe this is going to be for a vacant IBF title. Who's got Hergovic? Um, Eddie Hearn. Eddie Hearn promotes well, Hergovic. Well, he's with Sourlands, but he promotes, yeah, he promotes Hergovic. Does he? Mm. Okay. Well, he wouldn't right. be in there otherwise, would it? Well, probably Zang and Wilder are, so there you are. So it's already been Nick represented from the outset. So why shouldn't we have some more misrepresentations? Right. So, you, bad days so you're seeing, yeah, you're seeing, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm still smart enough to not win that war versus Philip Hergovic. I'm very, very confident for, a title. For, for the vacant IBF title. I believe the on title... On June 1st. On June the 1st. So, let me get this right. Fury fights Usyk on May the 20... May the 18th. May the 18th. Yes. And we, we are now, after you said that they couldn't happen, you're now saying that the get belts will get splintered and the IBF will be vacated or it will be forced to be vacated. The undisputed champion will be forced to vacate the IBF belt within 14 days. Yeah. That's what I'm hearing. Okay. I'm only, I'm, listen, I, I, I get some good information and that's what I'm hearing is going to happen. That'd be first. So, yeah, pun? No, I said that's good. That's, <laughs> that's very good. <laughs> okay, right. So, the middleweight contest that I'm hearing is Hamza Shiraz versus Ammo Williams. That's a good fight. Okay. 
Yeah, it's a great fight. Both, undefe uh, both undefeated. Well, that's Frank's Good fighter, fight. isn't it? Shiraz. Yeah, Shiraz is Frank's fighter. Bradley and Skeets, Williams mate. obviously works with Eddie Hearn. Bradley Skeets, mate, Hamza yeah. Shiraz, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, should I continue? Just, I want to back, no. go back for a second. Yeah, go why, on. Why, why wouldn't... I've always felt, and you and I have discussed this, that Anthony Joshua's pursuit was to be three-time heavyweight champion of the world. Yes. And here it is. The mandatory for the IBF is Hergovic. Yes. All right. It's now proven that it's going to be scattered like we said it would. Why would Anthony Joshua, the biggest game in town currently at this moment in time because of the, the, the reclaiming of the, of, the, of, the, of the opinion after mm -hmm. beating Ngannou and reseating heavyweight boxing back at where it should be, why would Anthony Joshua and his team not be going, thank you very much, we'll have some of that, that's an opportunity for the IBF belt. That'll bring us back to the table with whoever we're going to be discussing after the Fury Usyk dust up. Mm -hmm. Why would that be Daniel Dubois' gift and be not Anthony Joshua's? Because Daniel Dubois, Philip Hergovic was a fight that was going ahead anyway without the IBF title on the line. I believe the IBF title, obviously there's been ongoing conversations. I believe that title will be vacant and they will make that fight with the winner. Here we go. Here's the twist. The winner boxing Anthony Joshua. That's where it, that, that's okay. the way the landscape I just, I just, looks or sounds. I just don't understand. So you so so yeah, you, I know what you're saying. You don't understand, but that this fight was happening anyway on June the first. The IBF title now looks like it is going to be vacated in time, and if it is vacated, they're just going to put that on there. So, and so it's just the opportunity for both of these guys. And Anthony Joshua will be sitting waiting patiently for the winner. I mean, again, I scratch my head. Yeah, because I would have thought with the Anthony Joshua that this was the game plan. Hergovic, bang, world title, you've done it, you're three-time world heavyweight champion, and you're back at the table. Mm -hmm. None of the from other people about who and what and how. It's, it can be a straight split because you're bringing two world titles to the table, i.e. the fellow that wins out of Fury Usyk sure. comes to the table with a belt or belts, and Joshua does. You're saying, no, <clears throat> Anthony Joshua talks about being active, yep. wanting to be active. So when's he out next then? I'm, I'm, I'm saying September. With Frank Warren and Eddie Hearn doing a 5v5 again in September, that will be at Wembley Stadium. Okay. And I believe that's where Anthony Joshua fights again and probably fights for the world title against whoever, maybe the winner of Hergovic, Dubois, maybe the, you know, maybe the winner of Usyk Fury, depending on how that fight goes, depending on about the rematch clause, if that goes or not. But I believe Joshua fights for a world title at Wembley Stadium in September. Well, that's a good thing, because if we are saying that the Saudis are not only putting fights on in their neck of the woods, that they're going to be the financial muscle behind fights in this neck of the woods, then it kind of negates some of the dissent that's going on, which yeah. is, well, what's going to happen to all the fights? Are they going to all land in... I mean, I think that's an unfair narrative anyway, yeah. because all the best fights landed in Vegas, yeah. and all the best fights, or the most recognisable fights, Agree. landed in Madison Square Garden. So this idea that just because the Saudis are doing it is something that people should be dissentful about is probably not fair. But notwithstanding that, if they're doing it in London, then British fans are going to be very happy because you're going to see a whole array of talents, by your reckoning, Anthony Joshua. So that's a significant thing for British fans, isn't it? Absolutely. And I think, you know, I think, yeah, I think that's a massive move forward, you know, we, that we do get these big fights still happening here, stadium fights, because we thought they were gone, finished, because of this situation with Saudi and the investment of Saudi Arabia. Well, yeah, His Excellency Turkey Al Sheikh now bringing the big shows here as well, which is great news for the, for the fight fans. Um, you, right. Going, right, back, so to, going we, back to Zhang and Wilder for a second before we get on to the other weight classes. Yeah. What, how do you see that fight going? Zhele Zhang wins that fight. Purely and simply because I think Zhele Zhang seen, actually knocks Wilder out. Purely and simply because of what you've seen in his last fight. Yeah, it wasn't that I just... I, I didn't watch a bad performance. I know, what, I know when a fighter has actually hit that time in his career right. where he's gone, like as it, where he's a shot fighter. Yeah. And what we saw there of um, Deontay Wilder was not Deontay having a bad night. That was a guy that was a shell of his former self. I mean, that was, that was really bad. You could see that clearly that, that trilogy that he had with Tyson Fury, combined with his age, you know, the long mm. career that he's had, you know, it looked like he definitely got to the stage of his career where the, the fight had left him. You can't deny that. I mean, that was a... That was a terrible performance. And yeah, it was. You can, going off that, Simon, you go, Zhele Zhang would start a huge favourite and probably win that fight inside the distance. Yeah. I mean, I would, what I would say is that Zhele Zhang, besides a couple of punches that Joe Parker walked onto, mm -hmm. was pretty made to look like a bit of a lumbering ox himself. Yeah, absolutely. By Joseph Parker, wasn't he? Yes. So it could be a fight of two 
potential has beens. Well, yeah, well, well, yeah, but I think that one of them was, was a has been, the others have never been. Yeah, I think that Zhele Zhang, it was more about his size, his weight, that he just never had that. He, he, he was too big, so he never had the energy to go up and go to phase two, second level, whatever. He, he, he was one pace, he was Could, very well and a little bit predictable pedestrian. Yeah. You go, you're looking at that, but Zhele, um, Deontay Wilder would have to engage with him because that's what he does, that's where, that's where he's effective. And by doing that, I but, think but, he gets but, but you as a fighter look through the prism. Uh, so many, uh, so many fighters. I just want to pick up on that point you said about Deontay Wilder. Yeah. So many fighters said to me, really good fighters, and people that some would say have got got vested interest in saying something derogatory about Anthony Joshua, Carl Froch. You know, people believe Michael Jarman, Anthony's best mate, and other people believe that Carl's got an agenda against him. Mm -hmm. He said to me, the light's gone out with Anthony Joshua. Barry McGuigan said the same thing, and a couple of other people said the same thing. Yeah. But it hadn't. You're, you're, so what's the difference between the light going out with Anthony Joshua? And you saying Deontay Wilder is I'm, done. I'm, I'm glad you asked me that question, actually, because Anthony Joshua, you could see that in his performances, you could see that it wasn't the physicalities, it wasn't that, it was the self-belief. Like, so basically, it was here that he was troubling him. It wasn't the physical side, like, whereas with Deontay Wilder... You think it's it, the physical side? Absolutely, just totally gone. There was nothing left. There was nothing... The, leg, the legs were gone. Anthony Joshua's legs weren't gone. No. You know, his legs were wooden. Like, his timing was out. It, it, like, the punch power had gone. The punch resistance seems to have gone as well. He was hurt a couple of times there mm. as well against a non-puncher in Joseph Parker. He's not considered a big puncher in the heavyweight division. And you looked at that and you go, like, there was a couple of times there where he nearly never got through the fight. And you just look at it and go, that is a guy... Two totally different things. Anthony Joshua, you could see, was just clearly lacking in, lacking in confidence, not stepping in with his shots, looked a little bit confused, like had no sort of real game plan. But you could see the physicalities were still there. So you think there's no possibility? People like Malik Scott around him will know this. Yeah. I and mean, I remember speaking to Malik Scott, Deontay Wilder's trainer. I remember speaking to him about Deontay Wilder and the fact that I, you know, I said it to him. It's probably over quite audacious of me to say it to him, but I said it. That technically, I thought that Deontay Wilder was one of the worst heavyweight champions we'd had. I said and I know yeah. that we can talk about Charles Martin and other people, but Charles Martin isn't mentioned in the same breath yeah. as Deontay Wilder. Deontay Wilder was brought to the table of legendary status. And he felt that we were going to see so much more from Deontay Wilder. That was four months before Wilder fights. Mm -hmm. are, you, are you utterly convinced that that's not just a bad night's work? Because yeah. Hellenius, he knocks him out. Okay, Hellenius comes to fight, gets pinged in one round. Nothing's happened in Deontay Wilder's life before, besides a few kumbaya moments yeah. where he seems to have gone to a ret retreat and found yeah, yeah, yeah. whatever spiritual reincarnation he's found. So you just, you're adamant that Deontay Wilder is no longer in the building. From what, I, from what I watched in his last performance, yes. And you don't think there's I any... Don't, I don't think so that was a bad night. So why is he fighting just because there's so much money around? Yeah, there's so much money around. And he's probably at that stage of his career where he thinks that was a bad night. And he probably still believes that there's more in there. And then maybe his team do as well. Or maybe his team just, you know, supporting the fact that he wants to continue because of the money that's on the table. But whatever it was, going off that performance, and you've got to look at, you know, you look at the rankings and where he's sat and where he's gone now. You just go like, I'm not on my own with, with that thinking. I think it, it is... Okay. It is, a, it is a case of... Well, we'll see, yeah. won't we? Yeah, absolutely. We'll see. But he's still a huge name, hence that's why a huge he draw. lands yeah. here. Yeah. And he's Let's a go huge back draw. to Bridget Jones' diary. Right. You've got, you've got <laughs> three other weight classes. What are you laughing at, mate? You've got three other weight classes. Um, yes. We've got middleweight. So I said yeah. Ammo Williams versus Hamza Shiraz. Sorry, you did great, say that. Yeah, yes. absolutely right. Yeah. Great yeah. fight. Yeah. I like that a lot. Both guys putting on the line. And, yeah, winner goes on and gets that much well, closer to Well, he looked great in the last time. fight, Shiraz, didn't he? He did against Williams, yeah. Mm -hmm. He really did. I mean, that, that to me... Was that Liam Williams having the fight left him? Or was that Shiraz Style, styles, knocking I think out Shiraz is just a solid competitor. You look at everything that he does, he's solid. Like, you look at his frame, slick tall, well. tall, skinny, yeah, but he's one of those... He's got, like, um... Like, he's got a solid look about him. Like, even, like, he's good in the inside. He works well, heavy-handed, covers up really well. Just, like, yeah, I like everything about him. Mm -hmm. You know, there was, uh, there, were, there, were, there were shades of Tommy Hearns in there in that last performance. Oh. You know, where he put his hands together. That's that. Ammo Williams is a great fighter mm -hmm. as well. You Would know, you so pick for that fight if it gets made? I'm going to go for Suraz. I just think that he, right. he, he's on the momentum. He, yeah, he, yeah, he's on the momentum, and I'm going to go with Suraz. Light heavies. Light heavies. Now, this is where I'd like this to go. Yeah, this right. is where I'd like this to go. Anthony Yard versus Callum Smith is a fight that I would like to see. You don't want Anthony Yard versus Josh Boetsy? No, but that's not going to happen, is it? Because it's Queensbury versus Matchroom. Oh, of course it is. Sorry, it's five. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. fine. Yeah. Got it. Back yeah. on the page. Yeah. Are you back in the room? Sorry, mate. Back in the room. All right, yeah, yeah, okay. Right, so Anthony Yard. But none right. of these fights are. Half of them are not for Queensbury versus Matchroom anyway, aren't they? <laughs> so I can make my own balls <laughs> right. up if I want to. Right? Exactly. That's what <laughs> I've done here, mate. Yeah. So, um, yeah, Anthony Yard versus Callum, Callum Smith. Smith. Is a, is, that's a great fight. You know, Way Yard is, you know, waiting yeah. to see what happens with the. 
top of the bill and the undisputed and getting another opportunity. I think that that's well, they both, quite... They've both fought um, better bit, haven't they? Yeah, absolutely. Mm. And that, so it makes sense, doesn't it? Mm. That's a fight I'd like. And um, Moses in Toma versus Johnny Fisher is one that I'd like but won't happen because they, they've got investments in both those and I think it's too soon for them. But that's right. the fight that I'd like to see. Can you see, I mean, besides your little wish list, can you see the reality of this? Absolutely. I mean, this the, is, not, the, the this is not you being in the, wa oh, in, the on, in, the, in the wardrobe with a lion and a witch. On, hold on a minute. The wish list, yeah, the wish list is Anthony Yard, Callum Smith and Moses Atoma versus Johnny Fisher. The other, yeah. the, the other four I'm quite confident of. Really? Yeah. Featherweight. Um, Ray Ford versus Nick Ball, and that will happen as yeah, well. Yeah, we know that. Though. We know that. That was already, we, we already understood it to be happening, didn't we? Mm. Well, we spoke about it two well, I think we, ago. I think, I think yeah. we sort of, yeah, I think we did yeah. sort of. Pick, so Ray Ford just recently won the WBA title. Yeah. Nick Ford, uh, Nick Ball, Ball, sorry, Ray, was, Fa yeah, was, Ray, yeah, Vargas, yeah. Ray Vargas. Yeah. So it makes sense. He, he gets his opportunity mm. again, goes in against Ford, and um, yeah, it's a good fight. World title on the line. Nice fight. What do you get? I mean, what do you get the feeling? I mean, you, you like this sort of event? You like this matchup a lot, so, yeah. Yeah, I do. I yeah. do. I think you're getting the best, fighting the best, and it's not one of those cards where we're all waiting for the top of the bill, no, or maybe the top of the bill and the Chiefs. There's support. intrigue in every there's fight. There's intrigue in every fight, mm -hmm. and so I like the style. I like what they're doing. I like the, I like what they're putting together, and I, I love the fact that they're going to bring this to London as well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in September. Yeah. Um, and this one, obviously, on 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 June first, is hopefully that Queen's. Uh, let's hope that the zone's buffering is working. Um, do you uh, do you think the fans will appreciate it? Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah it'd, be, I it'd so. be huge for the sport, definitely. I mean, to get a stadium fight back over here when you just thought, well, it looks like it's gone for the foreseeable future. To get that back will be great. It'd be great for the sport. And it showed that, that, you know, they've got an interest in keeping boxing alive here, like big time boxing, as in big events, stadium fights in, in, here in England, which is important. I think it's really yeah, absolutely. important. Yeah, absolutely. Talking about big fights coming up, I'm, tragically, I'm away in Spain, so I'm going to miss it. I'm off because I forgot it was this weekend. Um, Wardley versus Fraser Clark. Yeah, I like it. Mm. Great fight. Um, Fabio Wardley, 17 no Fraser Clark, 8 and 0. Is it too soon for Fraser? Extensive well, that was the argument career. that was made and last year, wasn't it? When purse bids were put in place. Yes. Ben won the Ben Shalom won the purse bids and then yeah. decided that 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 it wasn't the right time mm. for Fraser Clark. Um, yeah. And subsequently, you now have that fight. Mm -hmm. um, in between that, it? he obviously boxed Marius Wack and got which, those which 10 was, rounds in. I think that that's yeah, what they was he, concerned and he, about. And he, and, he, and he fought Dave Allen. And yeah. Neither was he particularly impressive in, whereas Fabio has been impressive against David Adelaide, right? Absolutely. So, who's this a bigger fight for? Um, Fraser, right? Definitely. It's a bigger fight for Fraser because it's like... You now find out with Fraser, you go, right, this is your coming yeah. of age fight. This is your time to step up now. Fabio Wardley's done that. He done that when he won the British title against Nathan Gorman, a fight that was a 50-50. He went in there, dismantled him in three rounds, looked great in doing that. And like you right, you said that, you know, last time out against David Adelaide, out, out in Saudi he Arabia, looked he looked great. Yeah. But he had to come through those moments as well. He, he showed a lot of character. A bit down, didn't he? he yeah, he, he showed a lot of character. You go, Fraser's not done that. You know, he's had that opportunity. He had big Marius Wack, York called burning, you know, it was burning hot last year. You know, it was very hot in there. Yes, it was. But we, know, we saw no acceleration yeah. in his style. Everything was just a little bit one pace. And you go, mate, that was the perfect opponent for you to shine. Now you're going to have to do it against, you know, Fabio. So Fabio will start a favourite going into this one. When you look at the credentials of the two, and they're both their backgrounds, you go like, you know, with Fraser's extensive amateur career, pedigree and mm. winning a medal at the Olympics, etc. But... Yeah, Wardley will start a favourite for me in this. What do you think? I mean, the, obviously there's going to be a winner and loser in this fight. And, and let's be clear, I like both boys. Yeah. And I've, you know, I said to Fraser um, that I've picked Fabio for this fight. And it's not because I want to be disrespectful to Fraser. I was asked a direct question. I gave a direct answer. He then asked me. So I said the same thing because I'm not yeah. going to say something different. Sure. But what happens to the winners and losers in this fight? Where does the winner go? And as a result of the loss, where does the loser likely go? Yeah, it's an interesting one, that. But, um, I suppose it depends who wins and who loses. Yeah, if Fraser Clark loses. Yeah, but it's, yeah, yeah. They've got, they, they, yeah, they've both got different directions, winning and losing in yeah. this one, I think. that You know, for Fabio, he's there and he's built up that record and he's, he's there and if he comes off the Fraser Clark win and he's got the last one, David Adelaide, you go, right, you've gone through that stage now where you've gone through your contender sort of level. You're going to have to move up into the European level. I suppose level. it's the same for both of them, because if Fraser Clark beats... Fabio Wardley, he beats the man that beat a man. But absolutely, and ultimately, yeah. he's in a position. Yeah, but, I'm but what is that the, position? But for the loser, for the loser, you go like, for Fraser Clark, you go right now. It's a tough rebuild that. 
losing. I it depends, it depends got, the manner of the defeat, I suppose. Isn't yeah, it? absolutely. But where, yeah. Do, okay, but where do you think the winner goes next? So if, they, if whoever wins this fight goes where and gets what opportunity? So I think whoever wins this fight will probably take the European route and try and get up there and start getting a little bit of international <coughs> experience there before stepping up onto that world stage. Because, right. you know, we've got to look at the landscape of the heavyweights at the moment and, the, you know, the world titles, etc. They're going to be tied up for some time. So where do you go? Where are you going to, where, where are you going to fit in? You go European levels, the obvious step. Mm. You know? Sure. Yeah. I mean, or, 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 yeah, I suppose so. I mean, if, you, if, if a belt, if a European belt means something to you, then get that and then keep yourself busy by fighting decent fighters. Oh, so, and, or and you get all, yourself and, into named fights. And it's, but Simon, that's what it's all about as well, isn't it? You know, I think for these guys now, they, they, they're in the back of their mind, you know what they're going to be thinking. They're going to be thinking, look, you know, Saudis, they're, they're investing yeah, heavily paid. in the heavyweights. <clears throat> I want to be a part of that. Yeah. That's the motivation. That's the, that's the drive to win this fight yeah. because... Realistically, a win here does put them maybe a couple of fights away from jumping in the mix. Who wins it? I'm with you. I think that Fabio Wardley at the moment, he's the one, he's the proven one. He's the one that we've seen and you go, well, I know what Fraser's got and he talks, he talks the right fight. He says yeah. that he has to do, but we need to see him deliver it. We haven't seen him execute that yet. And for that reason and that reason only, I'm going Fabio Wardley. I just think that, yeah, he's, he's proven at points. that level. Yeah, Fabio Wardley on points. Can you see how Fraser can win this fight? Yeah, I can see. Like, if he ups his game and does what he says he's going to do, like he knows he needs to find some injection of pace from somewhere. You know, Fraser's a great fighter and he's tough. We've seen that. Them, them fights he had in the amateurs with Joe Joyce pro is proven. You go, wow, this guy is tough. He, he, he can grit it out. So I'm not worried about that side of it. I just need I need an injection of pace from Fraser. You know, as far as the the heart and the desire goes, I know that he's got that, that's there. We've seen mm. that, it was proven. And we know that he'll bite down and he'll, he'll do it when he has to. But we need to see that injection because we've seen that from Fabio Wardley. Yeah. He's done it against that Adelaide, he's done it against Nathan Gordon where you go, that injection of pace is what yeah. wins you fight. Different gear. Different gear. Yeah. And that's what we need to see, you know. Um, is that so the right yeah, expression to fight. use in conjunction with boxing these days? What? Different gear. Probably not. No. 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 <laughs> Depends who you're talking about. There you go. Absolutely. <laughs> um, <laughs> It's also a decent undercard on, on, on the 31st, isn't it? Sunday, isn't it? Sunday, yeah, Sunday, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Ben's out, Ben Whitaker's out. Looking forward to that, yeah, Ben yeah. Whitaker's out. Um, yeah, we're just looking forward to the development, watching him grow. Mm. I mean, this, that kid, for me, is... <coughs> Exciting. Yeah, he's, he's the next... Flamboyant, charismatic, yeah. he's got the lot. You know, the last time we saw Ben was on the Boazzi Aziz. Yeah. Uh, on the undercard of that, and... There was a, a mixed reaction from certain quarters um, about some of the showboating. I'm not, I've got a problem with it. Mm -hmm. I think that style and charisma, and you know, I think there's a point, you know, I think that, you know, like Nazim took the piss out of Steve Robinson, and I didn't yeah. like that very much. Yeah. Um, but I think that Whitaker is such a talent, uh, and the fighter that he did it to um, is not a mug yeah. in the last fight. Yeah. Um, and so I'm looking forward to seeing a bit more of that, because I think that kind of stuff is interesting it's engaging i just don't want ben to have his head distracted and it'll be mm -hmm. interesting to see as he steps up the levels if he can do this because i was i took no we're going to go to the fight and he was like i'm not sure if he's going to do that when he gets up to different levels i, I wouldn't right. be surprised well yeah absolutely I I, I'm, I'm with you i think he's an exceptional talent like he's fighting um central area champion actually in this fight leon willings and it's a good again another yeah. step up for him but willings is one of those guys that does a little bit of showboating himself right. so it's going to be interesting to see what goes on here because he's one of those characters as well it's a good fight it's a it's, it's a great fight one that i'm really looking forward to as well so i mean chris congo and florian oh, marker florian marker yeah. yeah yeah really looking forward to that one that that's that for me is a real 50 50 fight who do i think wins I think Chris Congo and his team up with Ben Davison and being in Marco's that gym. Marco's very confident. You, you saw him in the studio. Mark, a different show the other day. Mark, Marco sitting there taunting him. Yeah. And pretty much saying, you didn't want to fight me. You don't really want to fight me. And you wish you, were, and you, wish you didn't have to fight me. Well, Marco, that's his, that, that, yeah. that, that is what he's all about, Marco. Yeah. He does that. He's, he, he's very But he just exuded this very it, calm air of confidence. Yeah. Um, but Self-belief. Yeah. yeah. Is unreal, but Chris Congo. But technically, Chris Congo is a better, fight, much better fighter, isn't he? He is, and you know he's had that experience. He lost to um, in his last fight, Echo Esserman, yeah, and by split decision yeah, in his yeah. last fight. But he showed a lot of character in that as well. And he'll have to. Both of these guys will in this one. Florian Marco has been on the floor a couple of times himself, and he may have to pick himself up again here. Good fight. Against, yeah, it's a great fight, yeah. and I think that Congo being in that gym, you know, with Ben Davidson surrounded by Anthony Joshua and all the team and all that, it's going to give him that 
that added mm. confidence as well. You know, like success breeds success, and he'll want to, he'll want to continue on that gravy train. So well, we'll see. it's a great fight. Good, if, a, it a really good, is a good set of fights. Um, talk about good fights. Dalton Smith. Yes. Um, obviously, Dalton is now after his fight on the weekend calling out Adam Azim. But let's talk about his performance against Jose Zabida yeah. on the weekend. I mean, he went in with a decent reputation. He's fought at world level. Eddie's talking about him being a world class fighter. I don't know what you think about that. You told, you'd told spoken to me about him previously being a, being a very diff difficult opponent. Yeah. And you look at some of the fights that he's had, Regis Progress and people yeah, of that nature that took Regis a Regis in, yeah. in, in, in 11 rounds. Like he's, he's boxed at the top, top level. Um, I always thought it was going to be a, diff a difficult fight, actually, for Dalton Smith. You know, you go, you, you, you're looking at it on paper and you go, it's a big step up this, yep. a big step up. You're now going into sort of fringe world level, that, mm. sort, of, that sort of standard. You know, are you going to be able to compete at that level? Because you've never been there before. And the answer is yes, he come through with flying colours. Body shot was a fifth round, I believe. It was yeah. a, the straight shot through the middle in the solar plexus and finished Sapida off. No one does that. You know, I know people talk about, well, Sapida's had a long career, he's been around or whatever. Still not happened. Yeah. You know, he still takes the best a long way. You know, he's a tough guy, yeah. only the best to beat him. And uh, I thought it was a calculated performance from Dalton Smith where he showed it was an educated performance. He was taking his time. He was looking for his shots. He wasn't rushing in. He didn't get stupid. And he took the opportunity when he saw it. I think that was, you know, he showed that he's there. He's there and, and ready for that huge step up. You know, you're talking about a fight that I know Eddie Hearn's calling for. Yeah. He's, he's, well, it's not Eddie. I mean, to be fair to Eddie, it's not him calling for it. It's no. been called. Yeah. It's been called by the EBU and it's been called by the British Boxing Board of Control. Right. Which is Adam Azim. Yeah. Um, and ultimately, Dalton called it straight out, straight afterwards. Yes. Yeah. I mean... And Eddie's using it as an opportunity to, to uh, poke some fun at Ben Shalom and talk about not promoting things and not doing yeah, enough sure. appearances and giving him a lecture. That's a different conversation. But in fairness to Eddie, um, that's the fight that's been ordered. But if I'm Adam Azim and I'm thinking to myself, or if I'm Adam Azim's management, yeah. maybe not now. 11 well, fights against 16. Well, I'd go for it. I'd go for it. Do we tell you why I'd go for it? Because yeah, I think that it's a 50-50 fight. It really is. Adam Azim is a super talent anyway. They've, they've got total belief that they'll beat Dalton Smith, as, as Dalton Smith does for Adam Azim. Right. I go, we don't have to wait and try and build it to get world titles on. For these guys at this stage, for Dalton Smith's 27 years of age, Adam Azim 21, 21 years man. of age. So Adam Azim has got time again. A loss doesn't mean it's over. What I'm saying is, that's a great fight, a huge depends you, fight. Depends how you react to a lot. Yeah, though, absolutely. It? But I just, I, but I just think if you look at the, the the two guys and their characters, styles, you go, it's not going to be a one-sided blowout anyway. It's a, it's a genuine 50-50 mm. fight that. So the loser goes back, rebuilds, comes again because the winner for me will kick on and go. I know it's early for Adam Azim because he's only had 11 fights, but you go, why not? But the you know, why not? But we, the indication seems to be by the social media stuff that comes out of Adam Azim, which is congratulations for a great performance. Yeah. And at some point, I'm sure we'll meet, which, yeah. which has been read into as not anytime soon. Yeah, well, you know, I, I think that it's a good move for, for both teams, for both camps, because I think that the loser rebuilds. It's not like you, you lost your careers over, you found your level. It's not like that with these two. These are two exceptional talents. And I think that we live in a world where, you know, we want to see these fights. Don't let, don't let it brew no, and, then we, and then we miss it. Agreed. But matchmaking is also an important part of it and developing Absolutely. fighters at the right pace. We've been waxing lyrical of Adam Azim up until the last couple of fights mm. where I think we've both seen indications that there's a, a little bit of a way to go. We um, where, where we stepped up the level. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but we've we've been talking about Dalton Smith now for a little bit, and he's got momentum. His performances are getting better. Yes. So it, it seems that Adam Azim is coming off a little bit, and Dalton Smith is coming up a little bit. So that's why I would be looking at it if I was managing Adam Azim, saying maybe another couple of fights in between, and then mm -hmm. I'll deal with Dalton Smith. Well, well, I think that that's it's probably where it would fall anyway. If I'm totally honest, what I'm saying is that that. I'm hoping that they've still got those titles and it's like there's maybe a fight in between that mm. with, for the pair of them. But if it happens next, I'm saying, yeah, I, I think from both sides, I don't think it's a bad move. I think it's a great fight. And I think we, we live in that world now where you go like, you know, Eddie's been vocal about it. Ben Shalom's been yeah. vocal about it and saying, yeah, we want to start putting these guys in a little bit now. You know, we so don't have to keep... Money's with your mouth, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Have, you, have you caught up with some comments that Francis Ngannou's been making where... He, I don't know what exactly what he's saying. Maybe you'll be more across it because you spend your time Go hanging on, on every word, on. hanging on every word 
from 258 <laughs> and out of Joshua's teeth. Go on. They, but hasn't Ngannou been making some sort of disparaging some, observations yeah, some, about yeah, sabotage strange, tactics? Strange comments about... About getting, yeah. them, getting them to the stadium an hour and a half earlier than Anthony Joshua and this sort of stuff. It's all b****ed, if I'm honest. If I'm totally Is that honest, the technical all, description? Yeah, well, yeah, I, I didn't want to go around the houses Management about speak. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I didn't want to go around the houses yeah. about it. Look, he got beat, he went in there, you make a fundamental mistake, you switch out or you get nailed, and what happened, happened. It was Anthony Joshua doing what he should have done, and then Garnu, you know, out of his own discipline in the boxing ring, and he and he got iced. That's yeah. the best way. That, you know, all the excuses that come after about you know pulling, getting pulled in. And Are you surprised, given the fact that people made such a song and dance about the character of the man and the background and the adversity he's over, he's overcome to get where he's been, and he's been in fights before that he's lost, yeah. um, and ultimately uh, and learnt from it. Mm. That's correct, isn't it? Yeah, hundred percent. Like, yeah. So with that in mind. Are you surprised that he's seemingly making, making a, these making, excuses making a little up. bit of an excuse it's about absolutely. circumstances? Because it's not I, really necessary, is it? Take, take the big bag of money that you've got from boxing. I'm, I'm very surprised at it. And also that it hasn't come directly after the fight. It's like... Several weeks yeah, later. Yeah, several weeks later. And then you start dropping these excuses and maybe talking about dipping your toe back in the boxing ring again or whatever. I'll go, yeah, I'm surprised because I didn't think he was that guy. You know, just accept the defeat. You got nailed. It's heavyweight boxing. You got caught with a right hand. And Joshua's a great finisher. He never let you recover. He jumped in there. Same shot again. They've been working on it. You saw the clips in the dressing room with Ben Davison when they were working on the pads about that right hand looping it over the top, stepping back, looping it over. So they saw a weakness there and they, um, and they executed He's it. done now, though, in Ghana in boxing terms, isn't he? I, I personally yeah. think so, yeah. I think it's yeah. been great fun. You know, he, he put up the performance against Fury. Great. He went in anti Joshua. What, what, what else is there left? If there, was, a, a phenomenal if there was an opportunity to, to match him again, where do you think that would be? There's nothing left in there, that, is there? That, that's what I'm saying. I, I mean, you ask me that question, I go, I really, I really can't answer that because you go, you know, you take those big I didn't big really names. want to ask that question. It's an yeah. idiot producer putting it yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I actually saw it. I, I just never frankly. processed it, you know. I should have just tossed it off. I'm surprised you did. I'm not sorry. <laughs> that's another <laughs> unfortunate I'm question, actually... isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> what about Lawrence Acoli? Well, Lawrence Acoli's gone with Joe Gallagher, which I think is a, he's a great trainer, Joe. Yes. Um, and he's fighting a bridge weight, which I'm sort of underwhelmed by. His logic is, I've lost my world title at Cruiserweight. I'm going to get to heavyweight sooner rather than later, but if I step into the bridge away and I can become a two-weight heavyweight champ, a two-weight world champion, I go into the, the heavyweight division with some credibility, a bit like Usyk went into the heavyweight division as a, as a cruiserweight champion, right? Is that what the thinking is with Cody? Yeah, yeah. I, I, understand his, um, I, I understand his thought process there. I really do, because like... With Lawrence Acoli, it's now about rebuilding that confidence. He steps up to Bridgeweight, he looks at this um, uh, Rosansky yeah. and he thinks, that's a fight, I can win that, it's a winnable fight, and it gives me a chance to I'll develop a, a little bit more into the, the heavyweights. It's a big jump from cruiserweight into heavyweights anyway. His confidence is low, he goes in there, he wins a world title. His, his, his trade of thought is, yeah, I've got two world titles there, and then I can step up to heavyweight. Gives him a little, little well, bit of pulling power again. It's isn't it? It's marketability, isn't Absolutely, it? Absolutely, of course. Because, I mean, no one's, listen, no one's really... Focusing, I, I couldn't care less what WBC do. WBC give belts for yeah, Tyson Fury fight. What I'm saying is he ticks a box. What I'm saying is he wins a, a world title at a different weight. You know, against um, yeah, against Rosansky, which is, he's going to go into a hostile crowd over there. By the way, the, the fight against Alan Babich, Rosansky yeah, showed that he's rough, he's yeah. tough, and he will bring the fight. So Lawrence has to up his game. He's got to lose that negativity a little bit. The number two in the bridge away is Kevin Lorena, isn't it? Which yes. is the same Kevin Lorena that Daniel Dubois fought, isn't it? Absolutely, right. yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, so he's like... It's, Do you think, I expect him to be successful there, don't you? He should be, yeah. Yeah. But he's, like I say to you, he's going into a hostile crowd mm -hmm. and Rosansky, the Polish, they, 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 you know, he's very big name over there. We was there when he beat Babich and they just go wild. He's got to be prepared for that. Yeah, I think Lawrence has got the character for that. Yeah, absolutely. That, that's what it's all about, what sort of character is he? He said, you know, that Lawrence will look forward to something like that. You know, it's, a, it's another challenge Get the adrenaline him. flying. Yeah, it's another challenge for him. Yeah. But um, it's, a, it's a winnable fight. I think it's a very sensible it's move. It's not the plan he had, though, Going bridger and heavy. It's I think that's plan, very sensible. It's not the plan he had, though, was it? The plan he had was to come out of cruiserweights with the world title and maybe land into the heavyweights. This is part of a rebuild, isn't it? Oh, 100%. Yeah, absolutely. Because he can't make cruiserweight anymore. It was, it was basically, I think that's been, that, that, that's been quite obvious for, for some time. You see his last couple of performances where he's been very negative. Punch resistance doesn't really seem to be there. That's all down to weight making. He's got such a big frame anyway. Right. He's got the frame of a heavyweight. Um, 
with losing against Chris William Smith, I think that's sort of that that's where they changed direction and went, right, we need to go bridge away here. We need to rebuild. And that's all about part of the rebuilding process. Yeah, gets on. Yeah. Um, I, have you been watching this um, as a last subject? Have you been watching this unfolding, um, not drama, but sentiment from David Benavides about wanting this fight with Canelo Alvarez and watching what's going on there? And I've seen various people chipping in. I've seen Bernard, Bernard Hopkins yeah. chipping in, saying it'll be the last fight that Canelo Alvarez has. And Benavides has called out, um, Canelo and suggested that or asked His Excellency yeah. Turkey El Sheikh yeah. um, to to get make this fight and suggested that if he loses he'll donate his purse to charity Canelo Everest is going you don't bring anything to me for this fight mm. yet it's asking for 150 million dollars yeah, to yeah, have yeah, the fight yeah, which yeah. doesn't make a lot of sense if he brings nothing he brings 150 million dollars well, so so I mean, what do you think of this? Well, it tells you all you need to know, doesn't it? Like, you know, for me, Benavidez is a guy that Canelo Alvarez should stay away he's from because he loses. He's ducking him. Uh, oh, absolutely. He's too, you know, Benavidez is too big, now, too strong. Now, don't go around flinging the ducking accusation because you know where it's got people before. All right? <laughs> all right. I better be careful here. Don't, listen, he's not ducking him. All right, he's not ducking him. He's taking a different direction. All right. There you go. How's that sound? Oh, Stephen A. Yeah, Smith. So, Stephen no. A. Smith said it in America, didn't he? Ken, I saw Ken, the interview. He said, Benavidez he said too big, too strong. Um, you know, we've got to remember where Canelo's come up with, from a welterweight. You know, Benavidez is a very big frame, heavy handed and stylistically all wrong for Canelo. Canelo, yeah, is looking to go to a different route, which is probably right. But there's a lot of noise being made by Benavidez and his team. Good luck and Canelo, no, but Canelo is, the, you know, he's a man and he commands so much money. You really got to step up at some point That's and, and point. have the fight. Yeah, yeah that's my point. Yeah. You know, you, uh, five minutes ago, you were telling us, with due respect to the greatness of, the, of, your, of your career, you were telling us you were going to fight a light heavy, and then you were telling you you're going to go to cruiser, then you are going to go to heavyweight, and Bivol put a stop to that nonsense. Yeah. You've gone back down to, to where you should be fighting at, Super dominating middle, that yeah. weight class, and Benavides is the next guy. And if you're a legacy fighter, which you undoubtedly he is... The fight. You take the fight. Absolutely. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm with you. You know, at this stage in your career, you're looking at Canelo and you're going, well, what really is there left? You know, you've done phenomenal. The legacy's already cemented. But you have to give the young guns a shot because that's the way that it works. Yeah. You know, you go, you go money, there, you beat Benavides, and you go, now you've cemented yourself as one of the all-time greats. You go, you're getting, in, you're getting into... You're falling oh, he's, one of the, he's already one of the all-time yeah. greats, isn't he? Well, he, take he, the doesn't, fight he doesn't then. need to cement it. He is cemented in. That's baked in. Yeah. So, but, so we don't need to. You don't need to make that disparaging observation. You've now called him a ducker, <laughs> and you're now suggesting he's not an all-time great. What are you taking Canelo here? What's, what's going, going on here? here? You know what I mean? No, I'm just no, saying. I'm just you're saying. in trouble. We don't win awards, and this is this sort of stuff. Yeah, but that's probably that why I'm a little bit trouble. aggressive. Is that why I'm aggressive? I mean, we didn't um, went to the awards last night. You yeah. didn't show up clearly yeah, because right, you knew what it was. Absolutely. I'm well, preparing I knew I'd won speeches. In preparing speeches, and it was all there. And I was asking like, him yeah, to, was, him to was, bring was, the lectern down. Yeah, to I was, um, I was like, yeah, this wall was so unexpected. Hence, why Simon hasn't turned up. And he was he right. Win. He was right to be fair. And it's because of yeah. the spreading of fake news and misrepresentation. Like Canelo Alvarez isn't a legend, and he's a ducker. <laughs> That's the sort of stuff. Who that said that? Trouble. You. I didn't say he was a ducker and, a, and not a legend. You just did. I didn't say that. Rephrase that. Rewind. No, I don't Rewind. Have to. He will go he down will. in history. But what I'm saying is, he can cement something. Exceptional. Benavides is a guy that's around at the moment that people are talking about as being the next big thing. You got to give him the shot. That's what you know. That's what legends do, right? Yeah. No, I think so. And I think it's. Um, so do you want to take the duck a bit it's back? Interesting. I think no. I, you, you said it. You said it's duck. Yeah, but it's because you put words into my mouth. I'm not a ventriloquist. <laughs> I mean, you might be the right size for it, but you're not my dummy. <laughs> right. Yes. That's it for episode 66 of Talk Boxing with Simon Jordan and Spencer Oliver. And we'll see you. Well, I won't see you because next week you have got. Johnny in. Yes. And I'll see you in a couple of weeks. But Spencer will be back next week with Johnny Nelson. Nelson. <laughs>